<laughs> when 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 COVID hit, act and they were like in school, like at home classes, they were everybody was graduating. They had like a hundred percent graduation rate. Yeah, yeah. That no kid Lomax, left behind who attended program. Cornerstone Prep, some real shit. Coming back to read to the students was an honor. He says he hopes the kids enjoy reading as much as he does. It's about creating good habits and um, and being consistent while reading. And just knowing that they got somebody here for them, uh, just knowing they got some support, um, just knowing that you got somebody rooting for you and just wanting the best for you. That is why Brown Missionary Baptist Church wanted to give Coaching for Literacy $1,000. Because it's one thing for your parents and teachers to tell you the importance of reading, but it's way cooler to hear it from star athletes a true community changer. Corey Ventura. Well, if you would like to learn more about Coaching for Literacy, we've included their information to this story online. And of course, if you know a group making a difference in our community, head to WREG.com and click on the Community Changers link to nominate them. Salute to Aaron, man. Salute to Aster J, man, too. Um, Aster J says, once again, the face of dysfunction is sun kid. Yeah, this shit is sad, man. I mean... It's just fucking sad, man. Um, well, it's like it, Stunna said, once once you hit about like fourth, fifth grade and you haven't caught up yet, like you're probably not going to catch up. Yeah. It's just it's fucking sad, man. That's a parenting thing, though. They, they can't even solve that in a school. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. It's, well, Detroit it's, police working to track down a crew of carjackers who are targeting rideshare drivers. So far, three terrifying incidents have been reported. Fox News Jessica Dupnack joins us live from Detroit with the latest on this investigation. Jessica, anybody who takes an Uber or Lyft or drives one is listening closely to what happened here. Absolutely. And we talked to two of the three drivers that were targeted. They are just terrified. You can imagine you're just doing your job. You're sitting in your driver's seat and someone comes in who you think is a customer and chokes you from behind. And Detroit police are saying all for what? The teams, the crew that they are looking for, they're taking these cars and going on a joyride from one side of the city to the next. They turned your life upside down. Yeah. Just doing his job. This Uber driver carjacked. For now, I'm alive. Yeah, I still am scared. He's one of three rideshare drivers in Detroit in a week who fell victim to a crew using the same MO, choking the drivers with a cord from behind. When I just, when I stop my car, they choke me from behind like this. Then a gun to his neck, forcing him out of the car. What's going through your head? It's like, uh, this is my last night. You feel near your death. They just left him there in the area of Linwood and Davison in the middle of the night last Friday. I think he's the one because same dress up, same jacket and face. Detroit police releasing these photos Monday of one of the suspects wearing a very distinct backpack. We do have very good leads on these individuals. I expect them to be taken into custody shortly. Good news because they've already hit three times. Same area on Detroit's west side. The first, a woman we talked to off camera, said a group of three or four men and a woman got into her ride share. And within a minute, she was being choked from behind. Then again, a 58 year old driver actually fought them off after being choked. They didn't get his car. Think about the terror that they're instilling in the community. Because Lyft drivers are the lifeblood of the community, man. They'll keep their their transportation, man. They're fucking people. They're also people that pay taxes. They're people that buy groceries. They're people that go to restaurants. They feed the economy because they these are people that are just working, working class people, man. They're being terrorized by a group of fucking savages. Man. You know, this is crime creates poverty, not the other way around. Exactly, man. I mean, if you're a Lyft driver on the west side of Detroit, man. FedEx I mean, driver, UPS driver, pizza guy. But just done. think about it. How, how could you, in, in good faith, pick up a son, man, that looks like this, man? Like, I mean, like, we talk about profiling and racism. If you're a Lyft driver on the west side of Detroit right now, you owe it to your family not to pick this guy up, somebody that looks like this. Oh, you can and you will pick them up. 
Yeah, I know you will because you have to, but I mean, just to like, you, but not to work. Fuck it. I'm not going to do fucking work tonight because, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it make you not want to work because you know it's nothing but people that look like this on the west side of Detroit. Any day could be yours. Yeah, and even and we're not talking about getting killed. I'm gonna check out Whitney Webb. I, I look into it um on Battle Off. But um it's not even about being killed, it's about the terror of being driving and someone putting a rope around your neck and choking the life out of you while you're fucking one second you're driving, the next second the person behind you's got a fucking cord around your neck and it's strangling you. You know what you do? You hit thir- you hit a wall at about thirty miles an hour. They'll go flying through the windshield. Ah, oh, right. This is a movie, right, Johnny? What, is, <laughs> like, what kind of fucking idea is that? Diver, what the fuck are you fucking fucking Johnny Red? Even even the guy he taught you Tom Cruise now. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? All that's at that point they're gonna fucking shoot you if you do anything stupid. These are this isn't the fucking bad guys in the fucking movies, man. These fuckers will shoot you if you do something stupid. You sneeze, he's gonna fucking shoot you. What are you talking about, man? Um, he says he said, "Remember Dexter Manley couldn't read." Yeah, I'm from DC, man. I definitely remember Dexter Manley, man. Um, yeah, man. Ah, uh, fuck. Photos Monday of one of the suspects wearing a very distinct backpack. We do have very good leads on these individuals. I expect them to be taken into custody shortly. Good news because they've already hit three times. Same area on Detroit's west side. The first, a woman we talked to off camera, said a group of three or four men and a woman got into her ride share. And within a minute, she was being choked from behind. Then again, a 58 year old driver actually fought them off after being choked. They didn't get his car. Today they're with me, next day they will target another driver. Both cars were recovered nearby where they were taken, and all for what? I mean, you're sticking a gun in somebody's face to take a car to drive to the west side to do God knows what, and maybe sticking a gun in somebody's face over there to get back to the east side or vice versa. It's ridiculous is what it is. Did you hear what he said? We talked about this. We were the first ones to realize this. They're using carjacking as transportation. It's, it's a just new, a ride. It's a new form of mass transit. Mm. Also, Ike, is this a is this a chief? They couldn't find them a sister. Right, man. They gotta get them a sister, man. Cause um, this white man's um systematically, you no, know, what is he matriarchal, patriarch, some shit, patriarchally privileged or some shit. Toxic, uh, toxic masculinity. Yeah, yeah, some shit. But he's he's figured it out. Taking a gun in somebody's face to take a car to drive to the west side to do God knows what, and maybe sticking a gun in somebody's face over there to get back to the east side or vice versa. It's ridiculous is what it is. Yeah, the commander there nailed it. It is ridiculous. And this crew of teens that they're looking for, they're using a real account to target these rideshare drivers. But Commander Decker said that carjackings, they are up and they're way up compared to this time last year. That means no one is immune to TPD asking folks. Drivers in the city, have your head on a swivel as they continue to try to tackle this issue. They're telling the people to have their heads on a swivel. At least they're being honest. What's up, Razzle? Razzle. But yeah, anyway. They're, they're telling people, have your head on the swivel. For who? Sun men, right? Am I, is my head on the swivel for gliders? Tigers? I actually, I was talking to a, a glider queen about that, and she was like, oh, everyone's doing this stuff. I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> I thought, I, people doing this. Yeah, it's just <laughs> fucking stupid. Well, Britos ain't even doing this like that, like that. This is sun, man. They're, and they're doing it for transportation. Hey, man, I got some broads over on the other side of town, man. Oh, for real? Oh, man, all right, let's go get a car so we can get over there. You go 
stick some gun in some fucking old lady's face and take her car. Well, and if they're doing it with a real account, why can't they flag it so that whenever that goes out for a ride share, the police know to go show up well, there well, well, where well, they... Well, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. These systems, like the lift system that they do to like for the for the person to rent, get the car and all that stuff, it wasn't made with the Sun Man in mind. It wasn't made. They're gonna have to start making this stuff with us in mind. They just it's just an app. They don't have it built in that if a Sun Man starts robbing everybody, you get to press this button and blah blah blah. They just it's made in good faith. I mean, why couldn't Lyft flag it to where that's a dangerous account? Well, now I mean, after uh, how I, I, how many t- like like look, they 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 got the car, they 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 robbed somebody, they did it three times. So now by this time, it may be flagged. It may be flagged by now, but then they'll just use another account. It's really no way to stop them unless you just only way to stop this stuff is to discriminate in the profile. It's the only way you can stop this stuff. Reporting on Detroit's west side, Jessica Dupnack, Fox 2 News. Yeah, these drivers just trying to make a living, just awful. And, and these drivers really have a choice to pick people up in certain areas. And if they don't feel safe, they won't schedule pickups in certain cities, certain areas that they think are dangerous. So let's hope that they have these criminals soon. Absolutely. And again, they're using real accounts. These drivers are doing their homework. And uh, still, look at what happened. Police in Florida and North Carolina are working through a mystery. They're trying to figure out if a missing Lyft driver, originally from Philadelphia, crossed paths with an accused murderer. 74-year-old Gary Levin has not been heard from since Monday, when his family says he picked up a customer in Delray Beach, Florida. Now, over the weekend, police say badly decomposed remains of a white man were found a few miles from that location, but they don't know yet if the body is out of Levin. <laughs> Look at what Lyft drivers are going through in this fucking country. Gen Z premiered that one this morning. Make sure you go check out his video. Shit is crazy. Look at this shit, man. This fucking guy, 74-year-old guy, dead. He lived 74 years to to fucking pick up some sun man for while he's doing this guy should have been retired, but he probably like, yeah, I, I still want to work. You know, he old curmudgeon, too, too stubborn to fucking sit around in the fucking old folks home and play bingo all day. He wants to be out fucking, you know, he's probably spry, had eyesight, good eyesight, good mobility, still wanted to be part of the workforce. Right, full of life. Yeah, full of life. Picks up some random son, man. And then it's like he's missing and they just found the remains of some white guy somewhere. Mm. (laughs) Brutal, brutal. Yo, that reminds me of a story from here, from yesterday. Three 13-year-old son teams carjacked the vehicle recklessly, and in the process, they crashed, and uh, a 71-year-old man died. Oh, so, yet again, the elderly yeah. taking another L. And, oh, and, and, and here's the kicker. I You know this already, but they were released already. Oh, they yeah. didn't even hold them. Oh, no, they're 13. You can't hold them 13. Well, I did see a code blue cam uh, earlier today where uh, a uh, son man gets in a hit and run accident and leaves the police on a high speed chase. But he gets a uh, he gets arrested without incident because he actually complies once they once they actually corner him and, and catch him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, this is so fucking sad, man. This guy's fucking dead, man. Like from Philadelphia. Cross paths with an accused murderer. 74 year old Gary Levin has not been heard from since Monday when his family says he picked up a customer in Delray Beach, Florida. Now, over the weekend, police say badly decomposed remains of a white man were found a few miles from that location, but they don't know yet if the body is that of Levin. But his car did turn up on Thursday, being driven by Matthew Flores, who is suspected of a homicide in Florida. Flores, Flores was arrested in North Carolina after a chase. Oh, it's a fucking on burrito. It's a fucking umbrito. This fucking guy. Yeah, goddamn Chicano, man, did that shit. That wasn't smart enough. 
No, this is in Delray, Florida. He's a Philly native. He's from Philly. The guy who got killed is from Philly. But he was smart enough. He didn't actually uh, get the, the lift rider. He just managed to be where the guy stopped to drop off a fare and said, hey, can I get a ride? <laughs> Basically. Mm. Florida. And then jacked Florida's, his car like Florida's right, was right there. In North Carolina after a chase. Levin's son, Jonathan, offered this. I spoke to my dad last on, on Sunday night. He, he, he's a great football fan, and, and we, were, we were jubilant on FaceTime that our, our Eagles were going to the Super Bowl, and dad was in, our, in a really good place on Monday. Jonathan Levin added that his father had no known medical conditions. This is very tragic. But... But the liberals have told me, I like crime's gonna happen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it is gonna happen. Oh, let's, oh yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to show you how people are living on other universities because the gliders on um, the Michigan State University, they're saying, you shouldn't have to live like this. It's, 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 you know what I mean? Life shouldn't be like this on a campus. All right, Bria, thank you very much for that. And now to another crime alert. The University of Memphis is on high alert after three people were robbed on campus at gunpoint overnight.